Hello, campers. Hello, Met Opera campers. It is so good to be back with you, my dear friends. I know I missed you last week. My voice might sound a little bit funny this week, um, but I have been on the road to recovery. I thank you all so much for the incredible emails and all the fun songs that you sent me. It just lifted up my spirits, and it's so good to be back with you, friends. Um, this week has been such a fun week. We had such a fun opera, um, and you've had some incredible camp counselors this week to lead you through this week's opera adventure of La Fille du Regiment. And so without any further ado, give a thunderous applause from all across the globe for our incredible camp counselors, Camp Counselor Beth and Camp Counselor Joel. Hello. Hi. Hi friends. How are you? Fantastic. I'm so excited for the showcase. Oh my gosh, me too. Friends, you have created such awesome activities and our campers did not miss a beat with these incredible submissions this week. So buckle up everyone, it's gonna be a wild ride. We're gonna have so much fun. Our first activity that we're going to showcase, friends, uh, is a couple interviews that uh, some of our campers have done. And so first up, we have an interview with Soul Peace from Dancing Cat in Kansas City, Missouri, here in the United States. Take it away, Ben. City, and welcome to Dancing Cat Talks. Today, we're interviewing Sulpice from the 21st Regiment. Hi, Sulpice. Hello. So, first question, what was Marie like as a little girl? Well, um, she was cute and funny, and she liked potatoes a lot. I remember that. All right. Hmm. Next, why does Marie do the regiment's laundry and cook all their food? Just asking. Ooh. Well, she loves it. Really? Well, of course, that's what she said. All right. Why'd you let Marie go with the Marquise? I wanted her to be happy and play piano and just live in a castle and sing songs. Well, now, do you regret that decision? Of course! I miss Marie very much! <laughs> oh! Ratchet Learn! Okay, well, thanks for joining us, Soul Peace. And thank you, audience for watching Dancing Cat Talks. Yay! Wasn't I'm, that great? I'm so <laughs> delighted by that. I want to be interviewed by Dancing Cat. I think Dancing Cat is just on the rise to have the next talk show. Y'all ready for that? Yeah. The next <laughs> Ellen. Yeah, the next <laughs> Ellen, the next... Johnny Carson. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, friends, our next one, we're going to turn to Tonio from our friend Chauncey in Atlanta, Georgia for his interview. Hello, we are here on the Rad Rad Podcast. And today we are talking with Tonio. Tonio, I want to ask you a few questions. I don't want to take too much of your time. My first question is, what made you fall in love with Marie? Whoa, she's so beautiful. Hmm. And why did you join the regiment? To marry my beautiful Marie. And how did you feel when the Marquis came and made Marie move away? Whoa, my heart was broken. Hmm, so sad. What inspired your plan to get Marie back? Me and my soldiering. Well, thank you, Tonio, for your time today and answering the questions. That is all today on the Rad Rad Podcast. I, I can't love believe it. The salute at the end. That salute was the perfect touch. <laughs> oh, Johnny, that was wonderful. Javier, watch out. You're going to be the next Tonio. <laughs> He's so regal. 
Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I thought that was great. Uh, today, and I thought that was a perfect segue, we salute our entire regiment who saved Marie from the battlefield when she was a baby. Beth, can you tell us a little bit more about the Medal of Honor activity this week? About the, say it again, please. The Medal of Honor activity. Oh, the Medal of Honor. So the challenge was to create a Medal of Honor for the regiment in honor of them saving Marie from the battlefield. And you had to tell us kind of why, why you picked those colors or shapes. Awesome. We had some really great submissions. And our first one comes from Andy uh, from Monterrey, Mexico, who shows us the Medal of Honor that she created for the regiment. The medal, as you can see, is a circle, and I made it out of foam, of uh, foam, of gold, glitter foam, so that it represents gold, and the part of the of the bow that ties it to the to the suit, it's made also of foam, but as it is like color of silver, it represents the silver. The symbols it's got. It's a heart that represents the love and care for Marie because of because of when they save her at the battlefield and around the heart are the colors of the friend's flag. Look, here's red, white, and blue. Well, that was the medal I made for the regiment. Bye! Oh, that was awesome. I and friends, that. we have another special guest. So everyone, a big old regiment salute to our dear friend, Dr. Kamala. Hi, friends. Oh, I'm Hello. so excited to be here with you today. Camper Showcase is my favorite part of the week. And I wasn't planning on being on screen, which is why I'm wearing glasses <laughs> and hardly any makeup. But then I was like, you know what? This is too much fun. I can't not be on screen with them because what you created is so amazing. So <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Tim, for letting me come back and join you. Oh, we're thrilled you're here, friend. All right, our next um, submission is from our friend Marilia from Montevideo, Uruguay, uh, who shows us her unique medal for the regiment with a lot of character and some really neat symbolism. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Marilia, and I'm from Brazil, but I live in Uruguay. This is the Medal of Honor I made for the regiment for saving Marie. It has to look like a golden pacifier because they saved her when she was a baby and babies use pacifiers. So I hope you liked it. Bye. Wasn't that fascinating? I love oh that. Oh my gosh, that was great. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about, uh, Marie was always a really beautiful gal, but one of our activities had campers spice up her style a little bit, and I think Marie would look great in some of these next submissions. So friends, keep your eyes peeled and let us know what you think. So let's hit the runway with our first submission from our friend Amelia in Chihuahua, Mexico. Ooh. Can, you imagine, can you imagine Marie in that, that deep red? That red would be fantastic. I love a <laughs> costume change. I would totally wear that red dress. <laughs> I think I need this person. What was her name again, Tim? Amelia. Amelia. Amelia, I need you to come do a makeover for me. Because ever <laughs> since quarantine started, I have not been wearing my excellent outfits, and I really need your help to get back in the good outfit game. Also, Joel, who was that that just walked by you, given that... Our four-footed friends have been a big part of this week. I feel like we need an introduction. Well, Maurice, come here, buddy. Come here. Uh, there, there's another one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is my dog, Maurice. And he's got a French Maurice. name. He's got a French name. Now, Maurice and I have been away for five months. <laughs> so we're happy to see each other. He's been staying with a dear friend of mine in Connecticut, and I've been in Iowa um, with my parents, and I just made a trek back to New York and Connecticut. I drove in the car for two days to come and get my sweet baby. So I came to rescue my Marie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still happy to have him here. Did also, you show up with a tank like Tonya did? I did. 
I was he at I, risk of having to marry somebody very wealthy? Well, not yet. Let's hope <laughs> that I'm the wealthy one that he can marry. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy to be here. And also, uh, this is my first time doing anything with a Met Summer Camp. And I just have to say already, I'm so blown away by these uh, creative entries. And I'm so excited to see what's to come and honored to be a part of this community. He is too. Oh, <laughs> we are thrilled you are both with us uh, for this extraordinary. And honestly, this is all our first adventure. So <laughs> everyone knuckle up. <laughs> <laughs> our next submission, friends, comes from uh, Bernice from Montevideo, Uruguay, who shows us what her take is to style Marie up a little bit. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Bernice from Montevideo, Uruguay. And this is my drawing of Marie with her new clothes. I hope you like it. Bye. Oh, I love the blue. Yes. Oh, I love blue. I so love great colors. Blue. Oh my gosh, yes. And I feel like a lot of our campers really could, we, we need to hire a lot of them in our costume shop because they have got some serious credit already. That's a great they, idea. They <laughs> I also want to know what sheet music that was in the background. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I didn't notice that. Looks like you were playing piano. Yes. Our next you submission. Want to a fun fact about Marie's makeover dress in the oh actual production. Yes. So the costume shop built that beautiful, that white dress she's wearing that has sort of the, the very fine lines in it. They built this beautiful dress. They rehearsed in it. She was all ready to go on stage. And then they put her on stage for the dress rehearsal. And during an opera production, there are huge lights all around. It's actually really hot to be on stage because these lights are so powerful. There are lights above them. There are lights in front of them. There's a spotlight that follows her around. And they realized when she got on stage that instead of looking like a, kind, like a very, very light sea foam green, like they wanted it to look like, the lights were so strong, it made it look stark white. So they took the costume upstairs, and this is actually a real job at the Met. There is somebody who paints costumes to change the color. She can also paint designs on the costumes. She can paint leather on the shoes. So they took it up to her, and she tried out several different colors of cloth paint on it to make it ever so slightly more green, so that when Marie was actually on stage, it looked like the color that they wanted it to be. So there is a person at the Met whose job is to paint the costumes so they're the right color under under the stage lights. Oh my. And her name is Kay Bloss, right? Her name is Kay Bloss and she's awesome. Cool. We love her. That is incredible. Nothing like, you know, an 11th hour, you know, change at the last exactly. second. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. We all think, oh, you know, the, the dress rehearsal happened. It went so smoothly. We're ready to perform. Actually, what happens is the dress rehearsal happens and the singers all go home and relax and get ready for opening night. And everybody backstage starts desperately scurrying around trying to fix all the little things that need to be fixed before opening night. And you know what? Things always go wrong on opening night because that's the joy of live theater. But that's the kind okay. of thing that they, that they have to... Uh, they have to keep an eye out for. Absolutely. It's so interesting, right, Nilima? The things that happen backstage that you would never even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, our next submission uh, comes from Newton, Massachusetts, from our friend Lena, who's gonna show her take on Marie's spiced up new outfit. Hi, my name is Lena, and for Marie's makeover, I made mine look like this. She's wearing yellow sneakers, a pink outfit and an orange mask with two hearts on each side of the mask. And in the middle, there is a French flag. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. I'm so glad that Marie has a safety mask to wear so she can go outside. Yes, I, I love just that. Gonna say the same thing. That's great. I love it it's when people great really make their mask part of their outfit. It's yes. a whole new opportunity yes. for self-expression through fashion. Absolutely. I like the idea of the hearts on the mask. I think I might get some for school this year. Oh, great idea, Beth. Yes. I love and the French flag detail. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and now, friends, all the way from Kenya is our friend Hana, who shows us quite a dramatic transformation. Let's check that out.
<laughs> wasn't that great? I am rocking out after that music. Also, did anybody else know it looks like her new profile pic on YouTube is a picture of her as transformed Marae with oh, that amazing oh tiara gosh. she yes. wears. Yes. Oh, oh, great, Princess Hannah. Check out that tiara. That I love the bow. Hard. The bow oh. and the lavender. I also thought pre-make pre -make over Marie was pretty hip. Like, I'd hang with her, too. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I'd hang with her, too. I like uh, that shot of the stairs. Serious style. You got some serious stuff. Also, the potatoes. Oh, oh perfect God. touch. Yes. The perfect potatoes touch. are so great in France. Oh. I've learned so many things about yeah. potatoes. Put that put that in the back of our bag because we're going to come back to that. But oh my goodness, the potatoes this week. What I've learned so many things. <laughs> <laughs> but before we jump ahead, I do want to take note that uh, Hannah is celebrating her seventh birthday on Sunday and mm -hmm. Camp Counselor Joel, might you have a little special ditty for her that you can just make up on the spot? Oh, yes. Wait, <laughs> whose birthday is, uh, who's is turning Hannah, seven? Hannah's seventh birthday. Hannah? Oh, do I make an ABA aria for you? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Hannah, it's your birthday. Hannah, it's your time. Hannah, it's your birthday, and here is a rhyme. Here's a little B section. Here is one for you. Here's a little B section. Doodly do. Hannah, it's your birthday. Hannah, it's your time. Hannah, it's your birthday. If I only had a lime, I'd squeeze it. Oh my gosh, that was brilliant. <laughs> sort of. There's a little coda at the end that wasn't really, didn't really rhyme, but. I wanted to make sure that the second A didn't use the exact same rhyme as the first one. You know? Oh, that was great. Well, happy birthday. Seven's grade eight. That's how old my dog is. Oh, what a fun thing. Hannah, hats off to you and um, all of our other friends who had summer birthdays um, that we, we don't have the time to give everyone a special song, but wanted to throw that out there to our friend uh, Hannah in Kenya. Yeah, and that uh, one and is copywritten, so don't come for that. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of taking our hats off, our production this week has highlighted a number of different hats. And Camp Counselor Beth, your hats that you have showed us at the beginning of this week were just sublime. Do you, Literally. oh my gosh, you have one handy. Oh, they were so incredible. Can you tell us a little bit more about the hats and the activities this week? And, and maybe one of you, what's your favorite hat that you have at your house? Um, well, my favorite hat isn't in this production. It's my cowboy hat um, <laughs> that I wear down in Texas, but that's not for special dress up. That's just every day. Um, but I do like this one very much because it has the pins in it from uh, mountain climbing in, in Austria. So I really like this hat quite a bit. But it was so much fun to play with hats. And when you're at home and you're trying to think about a character, especially if you're an actor or an actress um, or wanting to become one, putting a hat on really helps that out quite a bit. Oh, yes. So our first submission uh, comes to us from Sophie, who shows us her work as a milliner. Let's take a look. Hi, today I've made a hat and I've made it out of flowers from my backyard and front yard. Here I have two leaves, and here are some flowers. They're very pretty. And even though this hat is small on me, I thought it would look good, but with a um, very pretty dress. I think it matches a very pretty dress, and especially that it has flowers. I hope you liked it. Oh, I love I love it. that's great. I loved it. I loved the inclusion of the natural world from your garden. Like how cool is that? Listen, as somebody who lives in New York and on the fifth floor with like nothing even remotely resembling a garden, <laughs> I'm so jealous that you have a garden to go out and get flowers from to put on an amazing hat. Yeah, I love front that. and backyard. <laughs> How yeah. dare you? I, <laughs> I have one plant in my apartment. It's a cactus. And yesterday, my cat ate a large chunk of it. I kid you not. Thorns and all. My. <laughs> what happened to the cat? Because then I went over and there were like little bite marks. Oh, no. <laughs> I wonder if any of the animals on the Met stage have ever done anything like they've eaten a prop or anything. Can you imagine? <laughs> 
know what I also wonder? Has Anna Netrebko ever eaten a prop? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's joke o'clock. o'clock. <laughs> All right. I feel like there's a joke to be made out of cactus and cat somewhere, but I'll uh, figure that out. Yes. Kim well, Counselor, let's, Beth, let's, let's, uh, let's kick this first one over to you. Sure. What do you call a man with a rubber toe? What do you call him? Uh, Emily from Pleasanton, California. Can you tell us what you call him? Roberto. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, we need to forward that one to Roberto Alanya. Yes. <laughs> All right, Joel, what about this one? Why do we tell actors to break a leg? Well, actually, we tell them to break a leg because back in the early days of variety shows, um, there were lots of acts that were built, that were that were ready to go backstage. And um, you were hoping that you'd get a chance to actually go on stage and get to show your act. And if you were able to go on stage, you would actually get to pass by the leg of the stage and get to break the leg, which means that you actually get to see, get your act shown. So people say break a leg, meaning I hope you get to go on stage. But this is probably a real joke. So, um, <laughs> because every play has a cat. Like <laughs> Yeah, that clever that you get <laughs> So I give you the answer, or I don't know if there's a different answer that you guys know of, but... Um, yes, every play has a cast. That's yeah. that's funny. I hope I can sign it. Both of those answers. <laughs> that is great. All right, friends. Our next one is actually a picture who comes from our dear friend Alex in New York City, who's always showing us such great um, laughter and such brings great joy to this world. Uh, Alex shows us the four different hats that he's created for Marie, Tonio, Sulpice, and the Marquis. Let's take a look. Wow. Ooh. Okay, I hat. Love it. That's great. I just the, the detail in all of them, I think, is just awesome. Yeah, that's that so, so amazing. Can we see them one more time, Dan? Four hats. I love the bottom right. I yes. like the metal on the top. Oh, I like this. Yes. I like his smile. Yeah. Yes, that's the best part. That's a good oh smile. my gosh. So this week, from milliners to composers, our campers have worn all sorts of hats this week, uh, and including that of a chef's hat. Uh, and our next segment honors the hard work that Marie did peeling and celebrates a vegetable that many of us take for granted, the potato! <laughs> and who knew, <laughs> who knew there were so many ways to cook and eat potatoes, and this week, you have all helped me get my appetite back with all the delicious pictures and videos that you have shared of your potato creations. This first picture we have is from Sana and her mom from Goose Creek, South Carolina, who cooked up the best sweet potato casserole recipe in all the world. Oh, so I'm tasty. Hungry. I want it. Oh, I know. Watching this is going to be torture. <laughs> oh my goodness. With every passing picture, I'm just going to be like, I want, I want, I want, I want. Can you guys put the recipes in the chat? Oh, yes. Yes, please. Because put the recipe you can in the chat. the recipes on Google Classroom. But if you didn't put your recipe in Google Classroom, add it there. The Google Classroom is still open. So right. add your recipe because we want to be able to make all these. That looks delicious. Also, mm -hmm. props for going sweet potatoes. There are so yes. many varieties of potato out there. Yes, we have gotten so many submissions yeah. this week. I feel like we can have a La Fille du Regiment cookbook just of potatoes. Yes, Sam, potatoes, potatoes on potatoes. <laughs> Our next picture is from Andrea and Mara for, um, from Monterey, Mexico with potato creation. And the, I just love that that machine they're using. It just looks like wicked fun. <laughs> Whoa, what is that? Is that a potato, like a emulsifier? I think it's is like it a slicer or something. <laughs> it looks like a potato meat grinder. <laughs> it looks a little dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like a potato masher, like extraordinaire. It's a food processor. Oh, that's, or that. <laughs> you can tell how sophisticated we all are. That's like, yes, exactly. Uh, you can tell how much I cook. Oh my God, is that a potato yeah. In lawnmower? In my house, a potato masher is called a fork, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lawnmower for potatoes. Oh, but I saw that they were using the safety part of the, of the food processor, so they were thinking safety. 
Oh, that's good. Good, good, yeah. good, good. You can get a food processor with a safety attachment? Yeah, it's on the top. We'll talk later. <laughs> I just, I just sort of... I, just I feel like I'm going to avoid the food process because I knew I was going to chop off my fingers. Oh, my gosh. There's the things. culinary world has just opened up to me. Right. Well, I just normally turn my ceiling fan on really high and just <laughs> throw the potatoes <laughs> at it. Oh, Joel, you're so silly. <laughs> well, I'm That's a so recipe cool. we haven't gotten yet on the uh, the Google Classroom. Potato wallpaper. Maybe <laughs> you can buy that, Joel. <laughs> yeah. That's how I get my shirt designs, actually. I just sort of oh, throw yeah. them in. <laughs> Our next picture, friends, is from Gus and Amadeo from Mexico City, uh, and they made tortilla de patata, which is a Spanish omelet. I'm ready. I love the joy in all of these. And a lot of these, you'll see a lot of these pictures come back in our slideshow at the end of the week. You'll get to see all their finished products, um, which, again, your mouth, like mine, I'm sure is just salivating when you see all these tasty creations. And can uh, I say, they have got some serious glasses game going on. Yeah. Yes. Oh well, you would know. Very it's trendy. Glasses game too. Very trendy. I have, look, this is the best week for me. I like hats, I like glasses, <laughs> I like potatoes. Like this is the holy trinity in Kamala's house. <laughs> and fashion, yes. And fashion, that's the fourth one. That one's, that one's less important than potatoes. Yeah, especially now, yeah. <laughs> Now, Ileana, our next um, camper, had made some really delicious homemade French fries, or as many other folks across the globe call them, chips. And you can see her making them. Um, she had such great concentration on her face. I can't wait for you to see the picture in the slideshow because they are so tasty. She added some paprika and some all these other delicious things. I never thought to add anything but maybe ketchup, but I know a lot of other people in the world are just like, what are you doing with ketchup? You don't need ketchup. You can put so many other delicious spices on them. Seasoning right. salt is really tasty, I know. Ooh, yes. Amazing. Yeah, I love a rosemary roasted potato. Ooh. Yeah. Cut it up into cubes. Yes. Throw in some olive oil, salt, pepper, some rosemary. Spread them out on some tin foil. 350 for about an hour. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, baby. Oh my gosh, yes. Now this last one, Alex, going back to New York City, put on the uh, the hat that he made of a mad scientist this week, and he showed us that you can use a potato to power electronics. What? And so he created a potato clock, an apple clock, and an apple potato clock. It's like a whole orchard of clocks. Isn't that nuts? Oh my so gosh, is that our, and that's our hat guy, yeah. You know, that I, I never really thought of this, but like the next time I go out, which who knows when that'll be, but I'll need to bring a potato with me because, you know, I, I find myself in need to charge my, my telephone every now and then. So maybe I'll just bring a potato to charge it. No, Tim. No. <laughs> no. Or maybe you can just skip the phone and just take a potato. That's right. That's right. Right. Hello. <laughs> what if they just have a, they can strap a potato to your wrist like a watch and the clock is on that and you just have this potato hanging off your wrist. Ready. Or I have a little like a phone pouch that you can strap to your arm when you're running so you can carry your, I'm just going to stick a potato in it next time. That's can right. you imagine the looks you that get That will not get me right? anywhere that looks in Central Park when I'm like running with a potato <laughs> strapped to my arm. I, yeah. <laughs> Listen, this is also very weird, but, and I don't want to plug another business, but there is a website called potatoparcel.com. And you can go there and you can send anyone a potato with a message or a picture on it. And it's funny and I've done it before and you should try it. This is just like a whole new market that I didn't know existed before this week. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. It's so brilliant in its, <laughs> it's completely bizarre way. It was on Shark Tank. I literally was like, what is this? And so I used it a couple of times. I sent a friend of mine a potato with Natalie Portman's face on it. I mean, you can do whatever you want. So potatoparcel.com, there is your advertisement. I think that may just be like our, you know, end of camp gift. So be on the lookout, <laughs> friends. Maybe we'll send you a potato in the mail. You never know what the Met's gonna do. That's right, a potato with Deanna Damro's face on it. <laughs> Wait, that, that's funny, or Pretty Yende's face on it, yeah. Or Pretty Yende, yeah. All right, friends, our next video is from our friend Diego in Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, whose family celebrates the potato in a very tasty way every 29th of the month. How to make gnocchi. First, we have to peel the potatoes, wash them, 
and boil them. Then we have to mash them and add the salt and flour to make a funny dough. We roll the dough to make little cylinders and then cut every gnocchi piece by piece. Then we have to boil all gnocchis until they are cooked and serve them with tomato sauce. They are delicious. And in Argentina, we have them every 29th of the month. Every 29th, that is just wild. Oh my gosh, yes. And there are so many of these delicious things that you all have created. Una. I am speechless. Isn't I know. that nuts? I know. I always, yeah. wondered, I always wondered how they cast MasterChef Junior. You know, I was yeah. like, where do they find all these kids who can cook? And I'm like, yeah, oh, that, here they are. That opera summer everywhere. camp, yeah. Well, everywhere. Another side hustle. <laughs> we all knew this. Our friend, our friend Una from uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, she showed us the beautiful illustrated recipe that she created uh, that is sure to bring a kick to your taste buds. Let's see Una's submission. Hi, my name is Una. Uh, this week I decided to make a illustrated potato recipe. Here's the spices and oil and things. I like spicy things, so it has lots of cumin and other spices like that. The first first step one, put in all the spices and oil and mix them together. Then put in the potatoes, mix it up. Spread out on a baking sheet, mix it up good. Joke o'clock! What is a potato's least favorite day of the week? Friday! Dun, dun, dun! Oven. Bake for 30 minutes. Take out halfway through and, and mix them around. Eat with your favorite sauces like HP sauce or ketchup. My favorite is HP sauce. And enjoy. Bye. Thank you. I love um, the joke o'clock. I yeah. love the joke o'clock. I oh, love that, also, that sounds funny. like a delicious recipe. Yeah. Luna, you are the coolest person I've ever met, I think. I don't know. I just love I think I think you're so cool. It so was fun. Such a beautiful illustration, and I just thought she and I said, Una, you really need to publish a cookbook with those stellar illustrations. And our last two, we have two more submissions uh, that are food related, are from our friends Ellie and Lucia from Lisbon, Portugal, who have been cooking up a storm this week. And so in our first video, um, we're going to see the finished product of Ellie's, I'm so sorry, I'm going to butcher this, Brat Kartoffeln, maybe, maybe close, uh, or German fries. Uh, so be sure to check out in our compilation videos, which has all of this week's incredible creations. Uh, she'll show you the full recipe. Bon appetit. So tasty, so it. yummy. So tight. Yes, cool. absolutely. And our last one um, in this segment is Ellie's sister, Lucia, who made a Russian potato salad and all the while made a stop motion animation film to record all the action along the way. Buckle up, friends. Let's take a look.
I just thought that was out of this world because I saw that and I thought, I don't even think I would have the ability to not just stop and eat that whole thing. Because friends, you you know, everyone knows from all the stop motion that we have done this summer, that takes a long time to create. And so the patience that Lucia must have had not to just scarf all those yummy things down. Kudos to you, friend. <laughs> okay, also I love at the end where she said she directed, she edited it, she wrote it, she's a triple threat. And then I realized, but there's a really important thing she did not give herself credit for, which is she also was the cook. So she's yes. a quadruple threat. Absolutely. Um, and Beth, Oh, go ahead, Tim. No, no, go ahead. Beth, because I made Joel introduce Maurice, there was a hat hovering over your shoulder recently attached to a person. And I feel like we need an introduction at the very least to the hat. And maybe also the person who's wearing maybe it. Maybe after the next clip, because I think you just went outside. So put the next okay. clip up and I'll go get them. Sounds Absolutely. good. Friends, we have had some incredible cooks and you have just showed me some really delicious things. And honestly, if my husband uh, weren't here, I'd be eating box macaroni every day of my life. Uh, so you have taught me so many, so many great recipes that I can't wait to try next time. Um, and I don't know about you, but my tummy is certainly rumbling from all these delicious things that we have seen. Um, but you've also, not only have you created some incredible things to cook, but you have composed and performed, and we wanna share some incredible things uh, from your arias that you have made uh, with Camp Counselor Joel's creations this week. So first, continuing with our celebration of the potato, Ben from Kansas City, Missouri performs his potato-inspired aria. I did not have a mom or a dad, but I had all. When I get grown, they were both gone, and I was sad. But at least I had my potato, a nice big potato, a good mashed potato, a tasty chip of a potato, French fried potato. I did not have. Uh, <laughs> what a beautiful homage of the potato in music. beautiful singing voice yes, yes. absolutely great You're gonna melody. Be a star. Mm, yes and what i just love so much about all these gorgeous melodies that everyone has created is a great melody oftentimes repeats and it gets stuck in your head and so many of these incredible submissions have been stuck in my head all week uh so we have been so excited uh about all of that Next up, we have our friend uh, Blow Vista from Kiev, Ukraine, uh, who's personally, her aria really made my heart sing and lifted my spirits this week. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Blow Vista Krovenko, and I'm excited to be your host for today's performance of the Potato Aria, composed by myself. Commonly known in Ukraine as the Potato Confection because of its shape, Today, it will dress up as Marie and sing an aria to Camp Counselor Tim. Oh Tim, oh Tim, I hope you feel well, so we could have more for the life together. When things are melting, campers are crying, the whole world misses Tim. Uh, I really need that needs to be my new ringtone or something. Oh, I love that. Did you feel amazing. So when you saw that oh too? my gosh, I did. My heart just melted, and it brought such a smile to your my face. Your heart melted like one of the mentees, apparently. Uh, yes. <laughs> you got your own short musical film. Like you've clearly had an impact. I'm very jealous. Uh, it was such a great treat. Thank you, my dear friend Bella Vista. Uh, and now we're gonna turn to some of the melodies that Camp Counselor Joel has created and our campers have used as the foundation for their incredible creations. And first up, we have our friend Emilia in Chihuahua, Mexico. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, that's uh, incredible. I cannot believe that happened. I'm so honored that you wrote that amazing aria to the music I provided. It's exactly what it was supposed to be. Absolutely. Such wow. a beautiful combination of melody and text and the, the voice. I know there's so many amazing I was comments. going to say the voice. It was a beautiful song. Nice music, Joel. Beautiful song, beautiful lyrics, and so beautifully sung. Beautifully sung. Yes. And now our friend Amara from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, she created two creations, uh, two versions of her aria, uh, one with a beautiful text in which you can check out on our compilation videos later on our YouTube channel. And this one that we're going to share, there's an interpretive dance, uh, which reminds us that movement can also tell a story as much as lyrics can. Hello, my name is Amara and I'm from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I'm going to be dancing with the same music as the Write Your Own Aria. As a, another project, you can do a dance with the same music from the Write Your Own Aria. I hope you like my costume. I made it all by myself. Costume. Oh, was, I know. I want one, one now. Yeah. Videos this week. I just love it. So graceful. Yes. So creative. Thank mm. you. I, it's, I'm so honored to have to have to you have used that music of mine and to make that beautiful ballet. I'm blown away. So gorgeous. And friends, we turn now to a different continent. We're gonna go all the way over to Africa to our friends Levy and Hannah in Kenya. And Levy and his sister Hannah have given a show-stopping performance of song and dance combined. So Levy has written a text to partner with Joel's melody, which he beautifully sings uh, in Swahili and his sister Hannah dances to. And so here's the translation of the text in which Tonio is singing to Marie. My angel, I love you so much. What do I need to do to be with you, my angel? Your aunt has planned a marriage that someone else will marry you. This news has saddened me because we shall be separated. I love you so much, the love of my soul, my angel. Here is Malakai Wangu, my angel. Shango! 
Mala Ika Wangu. What a beautiful, I just love hearing all your different languages in that Swahili. Mala Ika Wangu, my angel. Oh, that was such a gorgeous, gorgeous presentation. And wasn't oh. Hannah, the, wasn't that her makeover dress too? That yes. She Princess Hannah? Absolutely. Oh, gorgeous. I, it was beautiful singing. I mean, we've got some amazing singing going on. I'm very moved by all this. I feel very connected to everyone around the world. Mm. Uh, I just feel very, very honored to see that. That was so special. It reminded me of when I was a kid and would make things up and uh, be so expressive. I need to get some of my childlike spirit back like that. Ah, uh, yes. Next up, we have a composition by Grace, uh, and she has composed an aria about ice cream. And play, uh, pay very close attention uh, to the lyrics. The final line at the end is my favorite. Hello, my name is Grace, and today I'm going to be playing a song that I composed, and it's about ice cream. Enjoy! The cold feeling on your tongue It's better than all the food of mine Vanilla, chocolate, lemon, and cheese Swiss Do you even know what this thing is? Here's a hint It's the opposite of dumb Ice cream Such a good ending. <laughs> that was an incredible hint. Yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, such fun. And now we go over to the UK uh, where our friend Victoria has written a song titled Nightingale, uh, dedicated to Marie. Let's take a listen. I'm Victoria from the UK, and I will be singing the song I wrote, Nightingale Song, dedicated to Marie from La Fille de Regiment. <laughs> Beautiful. That was amazing. Yes. Awesome. And just the accompaniment and I just, you know, everyone, so many, all of our campers have just incredible talent and the, the, just the multitasking and oh my gosh, you all are just, you blow us away every week. Uh, we have one more song before we uh, sort of transition to our slideshow here. Uh, and next up is our friend Joe from Germany who provides us with a really great explanation uh, of the inspiration behind her aria. In this case, a lullaby sung by the Marquis. Hi, my name is Jo, I'm from Germany, and before I present to you my aria, I'd like to give you a bit of information about it. The aria is written from the perspective of the Marquise, but it's not the Marquise as we know her in La Fille du Régiment. Instead, it's a slightly younger version. To be exact, it's the Marquise who has just given birth to her daughter. I'd like to think of the aria as the last lullaby that the heartbroken Marquise sings to her daughter Marie. Fun fact, I actually used a lullaby that I know from my childhood, it's called Alles Schweiget, which means order silent, um, as a starting point for the melody and then worked from there. And this is why it has a bit of a nostalgic feeling for me, and I hope it does for you too. <laughs> Since it's a lullaby, the lyrics are kept rather general, um, but I still try to put a few words in there that might very well be applied to the Marquis situation. So, without any further ado, let's dive right into the aria. Um, I hope you enjoy. My brother's going to play the piano in this. Just a little shout out. He's amazing. I love him. Sometimes. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> Have fun. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wow. wow. Unbelievable. That's just, I, yeah, <laughs> just, just breathtaking. And wow. It's wow. So, oh. yeah. Amazing. Joe, so if you have an Apple Music account or, or, um, or SoundCloud, um, let us know how to find you. We would love to follow what happens. Yes. That's gorgeous. Oh my gosh, yes. What it sounds like Berkeley has a pretty good uh, a pretty good offer there. What was that? Yeah. Ten million dollars per second? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Such great inspiration, friends. And and you have just shared some incredible things. As a reminder, all of our compilation videos, I believe I created three or four this week, uh, are on our YouTube that actually go live in five minutes, uh, just right after this uh, session is over, uh, that you can check out all of the incredible camper creations. There's an entire one of all the incredible arias that you all have included. So be sure to check those out. Um, later this afternoon. And oh my gosh, it is joke o'clock, friends. We have one more joke o'clock this week to round us out before we do our slideshow. Let's take it away, Dan. Ah, from our dear friend, Ellie in Lisbon, Portugal. What does a cloud wear? Oh. A cloud. Thunderwear! <laughs> I feel like that whoop whoop was actually like a really good touch in the background. That was a really good one. Oh my gosh. Dr. Kamala, you want to take this one? What do you call a sleeping dinosaur? Hmm. I feel like I should guess, but I trust Sarah. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are great. Oh, uh, friends, your jokes have just been so great uh, all week. Keep them coming. We still have a really great week ahead of us. Um, but first, before we hit our slideshow, I want to um, showcase a couple of our really incredible artists here. Uh, and first, we have an incredible, uh, incredibly beautiful sketch from our friend Kairit in Estonia, uh, who just did a really awesome creation this week. I just love all of, I believe she calls it her fan art. It's just out of this world, uh, incredible. Um, and also we have another one, our friend Nina from Georgia here in the United States has created some really, really, really beautiful um, paintings of Pretty Yende. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. Which I feel like, I feel like we'll definitely have to send her uh, these incredible photos and, yeah. and all of your artwork, friend, is just really out of this world. And uh, we're just so inspired by all the things that you do. Um, and we just love having all of, uh, all of you join us every week. Uh, and we're actually, speaking of, um, of camp, we only have one more week together. Uh, and so next week, just a couple highlights. Um, that I just want to share with you as a little teaser. Remember, uh, Dr. Kamala and I are going to share uh, next week's code on Google Classroom, as well as our end of week mentee to get you excited about next week as well and to sort of see what you really loved about this week's activities. Um, next week, our really dear friend, uh, Camp Counselor Emily, who you met earlier this summer, is going to join us again. Uh, and she is going to lead us through an opera adventure of Mozart's Cosi Fan Tutte. And buckle up, friends, grab your corn dog and your cotton candy because we are going to Coney Island. We are going to go to the fair and the carnival and you are going to have such an incredibly fun time. Um, Maestro Yannick, who directs the orchestra at the Met, is going to be joining us in the career corner. So be sure to send lots of incredible questions for him uh, who can speak to the orchestra and all the awesome, um, fantastic things that he can share with us. Um, and also we have a circus themed dance party with DJ Bat Tim and Spider Dan coming live at you next week. So it's going to be such an incredibly fun week next week to round out our summer camp. An enormous thank you to our incredible camp counselors this week, Camp Counselor Beth and Camp Counselor Joel. We can't thank you enough for joining us. We've had such an incredibly fun time. Dr. Kamala, always a joy, and Camp Counselor Dan, uh, Spider Dan in the background. Uh, friends, it takes a village to do this and we are just so grateful for all of you that are involved uh, as we it round has out been so much fun and i have one more thing i have to add tim yes, you know we please. talk every week about how amazingly talented our campers are 
and you are, you are so talented. There's another really talented group of people without whom we could not have done this camp. And this is our camp counselors. Camp counselor Joel, camp counselor Beth, you're amazing. Camp counselor Tim, we literally could not have done it without you. So thank you all so much, our entire roster of camp counselors. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your passion and your joy with us. So thank you to you as well. It was an and honor. Thank you, thank you for having all me. Our, uh, our superhero here. Yes. Thank you. All right, friends, as we round out our week, we have one final thing. It's in our weekly slideshow to see all of your incredible work. So here is our week seven La Fille du Regiment slideshow of all of our camper creations. It's been a great week, friends. Have an incredible weekend. Check out the last uh, mentee that we'll post in a few hours on that Google Classroom mode and have a great week. We'll see you on Monday. Well, that was cute. I love that. Thank you.